Okay, today we are playing a game on Oasis. We are in the Diamond SR range, and we will be playing Lucio for about half the game, and about half the game as Moira. Uh, we are also on the console today, so consider yourself forewarned. Before we start, there is something I want to say, because it's in the email attached to the video, and it is, like, kind of written as a joke, but, like, just in case. Um, it says, I've wanted to send a VOD in for ages, but, crossed out, always had too much trouble writing the accompanying email. So... Don't worry about it, dude. If, like, anybody wants to send a VOD in, but they're like, don't know what to put in the email. Sorry, I just punched the microphone. I'm very sorry. If they, if you don't know what to put in the email, you feel like you haven't got anything to say, you're just bad at, like, starting writing something like me, I completely get that, dude. You don't have to include anything in the email other than a link to the video. You can literally send me a blank email with a link to a video, and that is good enough, dude. I know some people are, like, really particular with their format, where they're like, it's gotta be a 1080p video, 60fps, I wanna know your SR, what heroes you main, what role you main, I wanna know your gaming history, I want a copy of your driver's license, medical history, list of sexual partners, I don't care, dude. I don't need to know any of that information, you can send me pretty much anything you want. You know, if you got any questions, if you got something you want me to focus on, by all means, include that in the email. But all that is strictly required is a link to the video. Um, out of the all the videos I've uploaded, which is I, it's like it's getting close to like 800 videos at this point. There's only one video I've ever like refused to do. <laughs> I can scarcely believe it, even to this day. It was- I refused to do it because it was a camera pointed at the dude's monitor. And I was like, dude, even I got standards, okay? We, we, this is too far. This is too- it was like a really bad quality camera as well. I think it was the dude's phone camera pointed at it. I was like, this is too much, dude. This is- this is too much. Um, but as long as it's not a camera pointed at your monitor, I don't care, dude. You can send me whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, so, like, don't worry about that, if that's something you're worried about. I'll do whatever the fuck, dude. It can be a blank email with a link. That's good enough. So, anyway, let's start the video, now that we got that out of the way. So, we're on the Lucio segment first, right here. So, um, we're doing, uh, Road Arissa versus Road Arissa. This is pretty much how tens things tend to go at this point. I've seen people moving away from Double Shield a little bit now. Um, what well, with Toes' nerf and, um... Roadhog getting buffed. I've seen a lot more of these kinds of comps going around. Um, so there is a May on the enemy team. Um, we have to worry about that as Lucio, because we, uh, if May like, gets on somebody, uh, we can try and save that person by booping them away. We also have a Mercy as our other healer, so we're gonna have to spend, like, more time healing than we strictly want to as Lucio, because the goal is, of course, to be in speed boost as much as physically possible. Like, right now, we could be in speed boost, because this guy's full health, so is Arissa, we're full health, nobody's being healed, we could be in speed boost right now. Um, that's what we're, like, trying to maximize with Lucio, is being in our speed boost, and then a lot of other stuff is just extra, you know, we're looking for, um peeling uh, May off of people. There is a, a Genji as well, so we kind of have to worry about that one, but uh, we've got a McCree on our team, so frankly, I hope we aren't having to worry about the Genji too much. So, uh, anyway. Things are going well right now. I didn't really need to use uh, Amp It Up right here. I think we mostly were just expecting to come around this corner and find people a lot closer to death, which is understandable, but we come around the corner and, like, Everybody's pretty much fine, you know. Um, they're wounded, but they're not, like, critical or anything. We didn't really need to use Amp It Up right there um, to heal, but... We're winning this team fight regardless, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and we're more or less just playing Lucio right now. Uh, Lucio is kind of this way. Uh, we already could have been in speed boost. Like, right there, we could have been in speed boost for longer than we were as well. Um... That's like, more or less what we're worrying about. We do want to be using, like, Lucio's cool mobility as much as we can. Um, here we got Genji coming at us. This was a particular question in the email related to this, so let's bring that up right now. Look at me, I remembered. Oh my god, I'm so professional. Uh, let's see. Uh, right, we got... 
Well, in the first round, the enemy Genji gets his ult slightly before I get Sound Barrier. Luckily, it didn't matter because Genji fucked up his ult. Which he definitely did. We just saw a meat shit. But what could I have uh, done to charge my ult faster than I did? I mean, basically, this is the different. Like, us not getting our ult here is the difference of, like, one missed shot on somebody. Right? Because we were off by, what, 2% when he used it? 4% when he used it. This is, like, the difference of, like, getting a bullet in on somebody. You know? This is one of those um, instances where, like... The only thing we could have really done during this preceding bit to be more efficient generating ult charge is just, like, be more proactively, like, shooting at the enemy team and, like, aim, like trying to aim a little bit better. The difference between us, him getting his ult and us getting our ult here is so minor that it's the difference of, like, a couple of missed bullets, right? Like, it's not worth worrying about too much because it's a difference of literally, like, one bullet. You know, sometimes you're gonna be off by, like, just an agonizing little bit like that, and it's gonna be really upsetting when that happens, or not, because in this instance, you know, it could have been, but Genji ate shit, so it's not upsetting in this instance. Like, it's not worth worrying about it to, like, that fine of a degree, because on, a, like, any other day, you could have just hit one more bullet, and you've got it. No problem, so don't worry about it too much. It's such a minor difference that, like... You're not... It, it's literally just like, aim better for one bullet and we would have had it. It's not worth worrying about to that fine of a degree. So, um... There's another question about Lucio that we'll talk about after the Lucio round ends. Um, so... Right now, they're, they're trying to push in. We got Roadhog over here. Uh, this is their Roadhog. Uh, no, that's our Roadhog. We're on the red team. Oh, God, it's always so awkward when we're on the... I, I was like... Looked at all of that, and I was like, oh yeah, this is all our teammates. No, we're on the red team right now. This is all the enemy team, and Roadhogs in here get- our Roadhogs in here getting fucked up. So we've, we've come in here to try and help the Roadhog, actually, and he's using his ultimate. Uh, there Lucio just used his ultimate. Our team's not really fighting yet outside of, um, Roadhog, so we don't really want to use ours, like, in compensation for theirs yet, because our team wasn't in position. Uh, we've pretty much lost that team fight. Um, wow, McCree just, like, killed two. Didn't get McCree just get hooked? Yeah, McCree got hooked, and he just killed two people after he got hooked. That's fucking incredible. Great job, McCree. Holy shit. Killed the guy that hooked him, and then somebody else for good measure. <laughs> wow. Um, that's worth saying. We, we, we do want to worry about, like, Roadhog as well. Um, because we can, like, save people if they get hooked, if we, like, boop the Roadhog, but, uh, we're not always gonna be in a position where we can do that, because if Roadhog hooks you, he could be 20 meters away, where we're not really in a position to do anything about. Um, we did just get killed here, um, you know, Blizzard's happening, we used Sound Barrier. Unfortunately, uh, it's currently a nano-boosted Mei trying to kill us. Sound Barrier doesn't necessarily save you from Sound ba uh, from, uh, Blizzard anyway, because it's a pretty long-lasting ultimate. But, if you got the nano boosted mate coming at you, you know, you're gonna eat shit. But, the rest of our team survived, we're able to come back from the team fight and win the fight. Uh, we're able to come back from the ultimate and win the team fight anyway, so that's cool. Uh, both teams, currently, like, nobody's got any ultimates to use. Um, everybody dumped them on that last team fight for the most part, so we're... Pretty much just, like, hoping at this point that they don't build up too much ult charge too quickly, because we're about to win the round. Um, and if they're coming into the last team fight with no ultimates, they're not particularly likely to win. Um, and now all our teammates just built up their ultimates and we just dumped them all down. They didn't even touch the point. Easy peasy. So, we changed to Moira right at the start of this round, correct? Correct. So we'll go over to the question about Lucio right now. Which is, on Lucio I play pretty passively. Should I be trying to be more aggressive and take more 1v1s if I see an opportunity? Or is that of low importance compared to staying with the team in a fight? So, I, it, I'm in two minds about it, because I, I, I think of this in, like, two different ways, where I'm like, there's a lot of Lucio players that, like, I, dude, I saw a fucking post on the Reddit, um, where it, it wasn't a question, so I didn't, like, include it in, like, last week's video or anything, but there was a, a thread that was just titled, To All Lucio Players, 
Reddit is not a play style, please play with your teammates. And I was like, that's such a good summation of like most Lucio players. <laughs> Reddit is not a play style. You don't go, I'm going to Reddit this game. That was the thread. I was so, it was so good. I, I got a laugh out of that one. Um, so I'm in like two minds about this, where like Lucio players tend to tend to the overly aggressive side, but I find support players in general tend to the overly passive side. So I'm in like two minds about this. Um, cause like, to like Mercy players, I'm, I frequently say like, dude, if you're using Valkyrie, or even, even if you're not using Valkyrie, even if you're just like, you see an opportunity to kill someone, but particularly if you're losing Valkyrie, if you see like a support or a DPS who's like off by themselves and you think you can kill the guy, go fucking kill that guy, dude. Because like, to me, one of the most impactful things you can do in the game, like bar none, is remove another player from the fight. So, I think if you see an opportunity where you're pretty confident you can kill the guy, and it's not going to be, like, an elongated procedure, right? Like, you don't- you think you can kill this guy pretty confidently. It's not going to be one of those things where you, like, you think you get the guy, but then it turns into, like, a fucking 30 second long fight. Like, that's not worth it to get into, like, that kind of thing. Like, you know, if you're trying to kill, like, a May, for example, you can end up in that kind of situations where it's, like, really long, really extended, and, like, nothing ultimately comes out of it, right? Don't get into, like, that kind of thing. But if you see, like, an Ash or, like, a fucking Anna, a Mercy, who's, like, kind of off by themselves, and you're pretty confident you can kill the guy, like, you go for it, dude. You try and kill that guy, because removing someone from the fight is great. Um, as long as it doesn't take you, like, 30 seconds to do that and get back to your teammates, no big deal, dude, go for it. The exception to this is if you are currently concerned that some of your teammates are going to die. Like, if you think your teammates are gonna die while you're off doing this, don't do that. Like, keeping your own teammates alive takes precedent over everything else, basically. Um... Outside of, like, I have to touch the payload or we're gonna lose the game. That overwrites keeping teammates alive. But outside of that, keeping your teammates alive is number one precedent. So, if, as long as nobody in your team is, like, in critical danger position, and you think you can kill that guy, you go kill that guy. Fucking go for it, dude. Um, Lucio is one of those heroes where you're really trying to, like, you're, you're trying to keep your aura on as many people as possible. Because, like, that, you know, speed boost is a really fucking strong effect, which is also why we want to be in it as much as physically possible. Speed boost is really strong. So we want to be in that as much as we can, and, like, keeping it on as many people as possible as well. So, like, sticking with your team is what you want to be doing as Lucio, but if you spot an opportunity to go kill someone, you go kill that guy. No big deal. As long as nobody's gonna die while you're doing it. Um, but, dude, it's one of those things where, like, being overly passive is unlikely to be the wrong choice. Um, like, playing too passively is virtually never going to result in catastrophic disaster. It can only really result in you, like, missing an opportunity otherwise. Um, whereas going too aggressively on something can result in catastrophe. So it's one of those things where, like, if you're not sure what to do, Edging on the passive, like, edging on the passive choice is almost certainly going to be, like, fine. It just might not be as efficient as it could have been. This is also why I give the advice of, um, when you're learning how to play a hero or a role for the first time, I, I encourage you to go as hard as you possibly can. Um, and you're gonna fuck it up, like, definitely, um, because you're gonna go, like, way too aggressively. But the reason I give that advice is that it gives you a really good understanding of what your hero's limits are if you go aggressively. Whereas people have a tendency to play too passively, particularly when they're learning how to play something for the first time. And, you know, that's fine, but it'll end up with you having a real, uh, much more, like, hazy understanding of where your hero's limits lie. So, like, going really aggressively, it'll, you'll fuck it up, almost certainly, but as long as you're taking meaningful information away from that fuck up, it's fine, because you know, all right, well, I went aggro and I died, so clearly I went too aggro, so next time I'm in a similar situation, I'll be a little bit more restrained, and then, so you just kind of, like, keep, like, testing the water to figure out what your hero's limit is, and, you know, you'll fuck it up, but that's fine. Once you figure it out, then you've got, like, a really good grasp on, like, what you can do on your hero. So, you know, it, but if you're in a position where, like, you're not sure what to do, 
the passive choice will virtually never result in, like, catastrophe. It, by its very definition, it almost can't, you know? Like, sometimes it would, but very, very rarely. So, anyway, hopefully that... I got, like, really, like, long and incoherent. Hopefully that helps. Um, so let's get back to the game. So we're on the Moira segment now. Um, so we're currently playing with Mercy and Farah. So Mercy is going to want to spend as much time with Farah as possible, so we're gonna have to do most of the healing. Uh, if, Mer if you're playing, like, Moira, Anna, uh, anybody like that, and if you're playing a main healer and you're with Mercy, I, I advise you to think of Mercy as being an off healer. Um, I think Mercy's much better as an off healer regardless, so... But, uh, Mercy's uh, an off healer, we're gonna have to do most of the healing, which is what you expect to be the case when you're playing as Moira, you know. Our teammates are, like, really getting killed right now. Um... Like, Doomfist got, like, went, like, really in and died. So, you know, Farah just got CC locked to death right there. Doomfist. Uh, we could have tried to heal Doomfist here. Um, but, like, he died really quickly, all things considered. So, the... Us not healing him there is, like, understandable. We could have tried to heal the guy, but he did die very suddenly, very unexpectedly. Um, because he kind of just went in and then, like... Got clapped very quickly, so... Yeah. Um... <laughs> like, far literally got hooked, stunned, killed. So, you know, she's fucking dead. There's not much we do about that one. So far changed, um, and so did Doomfist as well. So now we've got, like, a more static team, except for Tracer. Um, Mercy's still gonna want to spend most of her time with, uh, damage-boosting Hanzo. So, again, we should be expecting to have to do most of the healing right here. Um, I understand using the healing orb right here, but... It's kind of unnecessary, not much is really happening right now, damage-wise. We could have, like, kept... Damn! Hanzo just killed three people. I'm, st like... I'm starting to get suspicious of this guy! Because, <laughs> like, that's the McCree, right? I'm not crazy. That's the McCree player. Where are we on the video? Five minutes exactly? That's the McCree player, right? Yeah, that's the McCree player. Um, so he killed, like, two people right after he got hooked. And now suddenly he just killed three people, like, kind of out of nowhere on Hanzo. I'm, like, a little suspicious of this guy now. God, I feel like he's playing too well, and now I'm suspicious. Um, anyway, we didn't really need to use the healing over there. Not much that much damage was happening. We could have used the, um, just, like, heal people with our left click and uh, thrown the damage orb in instead. But as we saw, it didn't matter. Hanzo literally, uh, that one's Arissa. So, I mean, you know, it's not exactly hard to headshot her. I was like, kill four people with headshots, like in a very short span right there. I'm a little, a little suspicious of the guy. Anyway, uh, we've built Coalescence up now, which is nice. Tracer just died, but she at least traded with McCree. Uh, Tracer is going to get back before McCree does, unless McCree gets he rezzed. And now we've been cut off from uh, Arissa. That's, this is a fair enough response to try and send the healing orb over to heal the Arissa. The thing is that the angle we've sent it at is not really steep enough to get her. Because like, we thought it like we were like, oh wait, I could use the orb. Yeah, we can. Uh, we need to like angle this a lot more steep if it's actually going to get to the Arissa before she dies. Because the way we send it, it's not a high enough angle. Like to try and res heal somebody with a res somebody. To try and heal somebody with the orb in, like, this position. Fuck, I forgot to start the pen. Uh, yeah, Someone asked this, how do you draw on the screen once, by the way. It's a program called Epic Pen. It's free. Um, we need to aim it, like, at the door frame. Because we need to, like, bounce back down onto Arissa as quickly as possible. And, you know... There's a lot of ways this geometry could get, like, really fucked up. And it could go off in whatever which way. But, like, the roof has got like a lot of geometry on it and it's really high up so like the best way to get this to Arissa quickly from here would be bounce it off the top of the door frame um but this is a fairly unusual position to find yourself in as moira where you're trying to like bounce an orb to get somebody over may's wall because usually when that's happening it's happening in a choke point that you can't really there's not a roof to bounce it off or the area is too confined to do it in, so it's a fairly unusual situation to find yourself in. Um, because if usually when that's happening, it's like the gate on Hanamura, you know, where there's nothing really to bounce it off of, except maybe the top of the arch, but it's so high that, like, the person will be dead before it comes back down again. 
Or it's like, uh, like the door frame over there at that room where there's just like no space if the wall's in it, you know? So these people are dead pretty much. Um, they just got stuck in the blizzard right there. And it's the worst like possible permutation of events as well because the enemy Orisa's shield is blocking us right now. Moira's left click doesn't heal through shields, which we appear to know because we walked through to start healing them, but fuck that's scary, dude. <laughs> Um, they're pretty much fucked. Arissa's actually managing to get away a little bit, but yeah, it's one of those situations where I fight. we were like really far up and they got caught. So they're going to be lucky to get out of that one alive. We're trying to sip the mercy to death right now. To be honest with you, like we're going to lose this checkpoint at this point. We've lost this fight. You might as well try and sip the mercy. We're gonna lose that fight pretty much regardless. Um, there was like, our teammates were getting hit behind us, but at that point I'm like, we lost the fight, whatever, sip the fucking mercy, dude. Um, so we do have Coalescence built up right now. Um, we can use it pretty much whenever. Um, Hanzo's just used the dragon, so we're gonna use Coalescence right now as well, that's fine. You wanna use Coalescence as early in the team fight as possible because it's one of those ultimates that'll like, your team can use it to go in it has like this dual psychological effect, right? Where like you're using it so your teammates want to go in because they can benefit from the healing on Coalescence while they're going in. And it prompts like a defensive reaction from the enemy team because Coalescence goes through barriers. So they will have this intrinsic effect of I don't want to be taking damage. So they're going to retreat more into cover. So it has this nice dual effect on people. So you want to use it as early in the fight as possible, and this is also just the way with support ultimates where um, you want to use them as early in the team fight as possible, because then as many people as possible can benefit from the effect. Uh, Zen and Lucio are the exception to this rule because they have defensive ultimates. You're using them to counter specific effects. But outside of them, every support ultimate you'll want to use as early in the fight as you can, so as many people can be benefiting from it as possible. Because ideally with Coalescence, you know, this never happens. But ideally with Coalescence, we're hitting 11 people with it, right? Where we're hitting everybody on our team and everybody on the enemy team as well. That basically never happens, but that's the theoretical goal of Coalescence. And, you know, a lot of, like, using Coalescence in team fight is, like, trying to find the angle where you have, like, the most effective area possible to be hitting both teams. But, you know, some of that gets kind of map-specific. We'll not worry about that too much right now. We, we don't have to worry about that. We're on Oasis. So McCree's over there. That's kind of scary. Uh, the enemy team are using a fair few ultimates. Like this Moira's Coalescence is doing a lot of damage right now because she's being uh, damage boosted. So this is like by uh, Arissa's Bongo. So this is doing a lot of damage to people. Um, and we didn't have, uh, we don't, the, the thing with our team comp is that we don't have a defensive ultimate. And so that whole time, we're just retreating from Coalescence, taking damage the entire time we're retreating with, like, no response possible, really. Like, we didn't even have, uh, we didn't have our Coalescence right there, right? We just built it up, didn't we? Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't even have our Coalescence to use, because you can sometimes use Coalescence as, like, a pseudo-defensive ultimate. You know, like, if your team's in the Graviton, you can, like, throw the healing orb into them and then use Coalescence, and that's, like, the best you can do, right? Um, I was just about to say this. I was about to say, um, so I'm glad we did it right there. I was going to say, you'll want to try and throw your orb before you use Coalescence, because by the time you come out of Coalescence, the orb's cooldown is basically finished again. So it's better to do that than, and then like wait like two seconds on the other side to be able to use the orb again, rather than having orb off cooldown and just doing nothing the whole time you're using Coalescence. And we did it right there, so hooray. Um... I was literally just about to say that, so I'm glad we did it right there. So, hey, you know, we now we get to throw a lot of our ultimates at them, because they use a few ultimates, and we didn't. McCree's using his ultimate again. Uh, he just ate shit, though, so no problem. Don't have to worry about that. So, uh, you know, we've pretty much been playing Moira, like, this whole time. Like, there hasn't really been anything that stood out um, to me. And, you know, that's how you'd hope it would be if you're in, like, Diamond, right? You'd hope it was pretty much, like, all the rough edges have been, like, sanded off at this point, right? And we're worrying about more, like, um, min-maxing efficiency stuff, like being in Speed Aura as much as possible, stuff like that. Instead of, like, the broad strokes, like, you know, don't fade into six men, which is more what you have to tell people when they're in, like, Silver. 
What have we got today? I keep seeing this video and I'm not gonna watch it, dude, because this guy looks weird to me. Um, so what we got today? Nero's great. I only found out about him literally yesterday. Good videos. Good stuff. Northern Lion's like my favorite YouTuber. Good stuff. Mac Muscles, I only watch because of his What Happened series, which is about, like, video game and movie disasters. Highly recommend. Good series. Uh, I don't know who this is. I'm not worried about Doom Eternal. It is published by the Bethesda, and, you know... White Light's also really good, like, long-form video game uh, essay kind of videos. Very good. Noah Gervais, I talk about him all the time. Great stuff. Extremely long videos, though. So, great job, YouTube algorithm. Except this, I still won't watch it, just on principle alone at this point. So let me go over to the email really quickly, because there's another question in here. On Moira, I feel like my alts have relatively low impact. Should I hold my, hold my alt longer to find a better opportunity, or just use it whenever I see a chance? So I have uh, always maintained this about Moira. She has one of the fastest charging ultimates in the entire game. So you want to use it as quickly as possible because the you only benefit from your ultimate being extremely fast charging if you use your ultimate as quickly as possible. So I use it very frequently, just like right as a team fight is starting or right before a team fight starts. Or sometimes I'll even use it to try and make my team move forward if they're like really scared to move in, right? Like I'm not holding my ult for anything basically the second i see the first like decent opportunity to use it i'm going for it um sometimes you end up in like a really good position where you like throw the damage orb into the enemy team just as like filling space and you see that like the enemy mercy behind them is at like a third of her health or like one of their dps is like really low and sometimes you can like pop coalescence to try and kill that person because they can't do anything to avoid it except get around a corner so if you see someone really low behind the enemy team you can go for that kind of thing if you see an opportunity but that's like the best case scenario for moira's ultimate um outside of that it's not an ultimate that has like massive play potential right like you're never gonna really pop coalescence and completely turn a fight around with it Sometimes that happens, but very rarely. Um, Coalescence itself is like a 5 out of 10 ultimate, you know? It's only okay. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about how you're using it, because, like, the theoretical high point of Coalescence is really low, <laughs> to be honest with you. Sometimes you are in a position where you get to kill, like, four people with it, but that is an extreme outlier situation. Most of the time... You're popping it just to do a lot of healing to your teammates or like because your team is wanting to engage a fight. So you're going to use it as kind of like, you know, um, sometimes you want to use sound barrier to like engage a team fight where you just pop it and then use like speed, amp it up, speed boost, like sp sprint straight up to that bastion, you know. Sometimes you want to do that. You can do a similar thing with coalescence because it's cover it's healing your team for quite a lot. And it's damaging the enemy team, so it makes it good for, like, initiating fights. But it doesn't do enough damage to ever be like, I'm gonna wipe the enemy team with it. So you don't have to worry about it that much. I use it just to, like, start fights, basically, right at the start of the fights. Because, again, like I said, theor hopefully we're hitting 11 people with it. That never happens. Don't, like, like, don't be like, oh god, I'm only ever hitting, like, 5 people with it, you know, like... You'll never be hitting 11 people with it. That's just, like, what we're aiming for in our utopia work scenario, right? So you want to use it as early as possible. Um, so, yeah, uh, we already kind of talked about that one earlier, so I'll not belabor that point any further. That's basically it. Um, you want to use it as fast as, as fast as you can. Um, so that was the only, uh, question, only questions in the email. Yes, it was. Um... Sorry, I was just reading the thing at the end again. Um, there's something like kind of personal at the end, so I'll, you know, I'll not. It's it's vague, but I'll not say it anyway, just in case. But like, um, you know, I'm I'm glad the videos have helped, and I hope whatever is going on works itself out. Um, I suppose I could have just like responded to the email and uh, kept that completely private, but it's very vague, very nebulous. And it's the, you know, that's the kind of thing that I always think sounds better coming from the person themselves, right? So, I'm glad the video's helped, and I hope whatever's going on works out, dude. So, 
Thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them, or your ship post with us. I've started streaming on Twitch, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. EST till midnight EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still um, enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future, and I hope you found the video helpful.